Uh, Drew Barrymore, cringe, uh, not a fan of her interview style, but she has spoken out about that, in fact, cringe interview that she had with Kamala Harris. Remember this uh, shocking moment? You have that one mother and I'm the second mother. <laughs> Mamala. Right, Mamala. We all need a mom. I've been thinking that we really mm. all need a tremendous yeah. hug in the world right now. Yeah. But in our country, we need you to be Mamala of the country. Yeah, no matter how many times I have seen it, Kinsey, it still sends shivers up my spine, the word Mamala. But what's Drew Barrymore now had to say about that infamous interview? I mean, unfortunately, I think she's completely oblivious to the fact that it, our body is rejecting what we just witnessed right now. You know, she just said that it was her scariest interview and that she uh, was very concerned about putting Kamala in a negative light, uh, that she really kind of worked her way around that interview, trying to ensure that Kamala would come out nice and clean and, and squeaky clean on the other side. Because as you know, it's very hard to get Kamala to sit down for an interview. Um, and you know, that's just how annoying that Drew Barrymore tiptoed around this woman when we're supposed to trust her to run our country. Uh, Drew Barrymore should be giving us some authenticity. Yeah, she totally blew it. Uh, she reaches quite a big audience, Drew Barrymore, so this would have been an actual prime opportunity to ask some serious questions, and she blew it, and it will forever go down as a shocking interview. Kinsey, we were just talking there about Taylor Swift's endorsement of Kamala Harris, but we've actually had some reaction from Donald Trump about this endorsement. How's he taking it? What, what does he think about it? Well, Trump said he wasn't even a Taylor Swift fan and didn't want her endorsement anyway, joking, well, I actually like Mrs. Mahomes much better, which is Taylor's friend, Brittany Mahomes. They're uh, Brittany's husband and Taylor's boyfriend, both Chiefs uh, football players. But we know that this was sour grapes because we saw Trump a few weeks ago post AI images of Taylor endorsing him. It, this is just his personality. And I... I get a huge kick out of him, but I'm sure that it did kind of hurt his feelings that Taylor Swift didn't endorse him. But you know what? I, who needs who needs Taylor Swift? Look, who needs Taylor Swift? Trump, Trump runs rings around people. He, he goes for it himself. He doesn't need all these celebrity endorsements. So uh, I, I don't think for him it really matters. Uh, look, speaking of Taylor Swift, I think the relationship between her and Travis Kelsey, there it, it's just becoming more and more cringe. But it went particularly cringe at the US Open when uh, they both were embracing, looking very awkward, belting out the rock song, I believe it, a thing called Love by the Darkness. Now, this vision has gone viral, Kinsey, but I don't know, do you think it was too much? Absolutely. It, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Every week I come on here and Rita asks me when I'm going to turn in my Swifty card <laughs> and it's here. It's now. I'm absolutely done. I, I will not be listening to any Taylor Swift songs. I'm changing my ringtone. No more eras tour for me. I just can't deal with it. It's just, it gives off an air of desperation. Like we get it guys. You are in love. It, sometimes I watch it and I think, is she trying to show her ex-boyfriend who is so secretive, the, the actor, is she trying to show him what he's missing? And that just feels kind of gross for a 30-year-old woman. You're an adult. Yeah, uh, you, you're spot on, Kinsey, uh, and I'm glad that you've seen the light with Taylor Swift here because it's just gone on a whole other direction. Uh, not a fan, not keen, Just it's just getting too much. Now, let's pivot and talk about the Royals because King Charles has met the New Zealand women's rugby union team, the Black Ferns. Now, they asked the King for a hug, and then this is what happened. Kinsey, I've got to say, I really, really love this.
It's a stark contrast from the racist royal family that refuses to hug, that Meghan Markle won't stop complaining about. I think the king looks awfully cuddly there. He looked, I just, flirt alert, he loved that attention. And he, I mean, you could just tell he was so happy to be there and so happy to embrace them. What a sweet man. And it, it completely contradicts the complaints we've heard from Meghan Markle over the last four years. These people have heart. These people care about their subjects. And and these people, they know how to love. They love. They know how to love. They do love. And I've got to ask you, Kinsey, it's also good to see him laughing and smiling. And that was also breaking royal protocol, I've got to say, because normally you're not allowed to touch the royals. But it's good to see him back out there after that cancer diagnosis. And don't you think he looked right at home, back where he belongs? Very comfortable. Absolutely. And it's my understanding that he really wants to be out there much more than he is right now. So he is pushing it to the limit. And you've got Queen Camilla saying, you need to get back home, <laughs> get back home and get, get over here. And, I, you know, he, he's in his element. He waited so long for this moment and he is just really enjoying it. Yeah, you can really tell. Kinsey Schofield, good to speak with you. Thank you very much for joining us on the show this evening.